Yo, I just got done recording my very first take in video on Dear Dax. Um, I, I'm, I don't think I'm going to do another take because there was a little I wasn't happy with some of the beats there in the middle, but like I slipped, but I came back from it. I think that's kind of cool. I think a first take's cool. I'm going to put that one up on YouTube. Uh, so that's probably the one that you saw that led you to this video. There's a few things I want to say about this. Um, I mean, my respect level for Dax is amazing. Uh, my buddy Royu, uh, 15 years old, Taiwanese and American, uh, lives mostly in Taiwan. He and I do some YouTube stuff together. He sent me a link to Dax's Dear God video about a week or two after it came out. I mean, he's a big rap fan. He wants to be a rapper. The kid's got the ability. He's got the gift. Uh, and and the thing is, I I just had a dream the week before about this, this good-looking, gray-haired, little bit of white, demon-possessed, politician-looking doctor dude. Like, slick-looking in one way, but like, all of a sudden his eyes turned red and he was like maybe pure demon. Like I couldn't breathe. I couldn't speak. All I could do was barely say the name Jesus. Like that happened in this dream. And so with that dream, when I first listened to Dax's rap, Dear God, every single line in the whole rap, I somehow identified with kind of nobody identifies with another person fully, completely, because everybody's path is different. Everybody's different. And so, but I'm, I'm going through this and I'm like, man, he is saying exactly what, I mean, any healthy going at it, you know, not just living a comfortable life, but anyone who's in the game, you know, if you know what I'm saying, not playing from the bleachers, not backseat driving or, or, you know, passenger seat driving, but anyone that's really out there making stuff happen, who's going through, anyone who's really thinking about life has asked. He's asking those questions. And I asked those questions when I was in college. Um, one thing, disclaimer, full disclosure, just saying, I personally have never had serious, genuine suicidal thoughts. Now, I've had a lot of friends who have, and it is not a joke. It is not funny. Uh, I, so, so I've had to talk with friends about that by doing a lot of listening, doing some study, uh, like anyhow, it's, you know, we all got stuff that other people are going through that we haven't. There's always someone else who's gone through something you haven't, and you go through stuff. Other people haven't, we need patience, understanding and respect. But uh, I did have a friend who was in Chicago classmate from, from school. I went to Bible school. I did study Bible in college, but my, my buddy from Bible school, he was held at gunpoint and made to kneel down on the ground and was mugged. I, he, his life got kind of messed up. So he had to move back home with his folks for a while. I think that's why he left Chicago, but we're glad he was still alive. He was just glad he was still alive. But just saying every single line in that rap, I somehow on some level, I had some sort of a connection with and just it really hit me like a bolt of lightning and I'm so happy that Dax put that out and put it into words. Now, everybody's got questions. These questions are healthy. I think that if you have not asked these questions, you can't answer them. You know, the, 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 there's so many in, in, in churchianity, we call it Sunday school answers. There's these pat, easy answers provided by people who've never gone through anything hard because they've never done anything really, really good or anything worth writing about, you know. And so we, with hard times come and those cute little pat answers from people who haven't gone through don't help us. And so he's asking those same questions. The thing is, I mean, I'm, I'm 39 right now and I went through, I had 15 years of depression. I, in my story, I didn't do medication. I didn't do counseling. I just did a lot of seeking and never gave up. And I, you know, kept reading the Bible every day. That, that's part of the, the rap. It's all in there. You know, reading God's word, reading the Bible, the way it works is you got to read it every day. You don't read it once and argue about it. You don't write a paper, get a college degree in it and then argue about it. You got to read just even a little bit every day. I've been doing that since 1999. Miss seven days, six of them. I didn't sleep at all at night. It was like a 48 hour day. So uh, usually going to bed is how I remember reading the Bible, but I have read the Bible every day and it changed my life. And that's why I mentioned that in the rap. Okay. But the thing is we all, we healthy people in live in a healthy real life, trying to help other people. We ask these questions. That's what I'm saying. And questions are good and awesome, but there it is. But now, but's okay. If you're not apologizing, if you're not apologizing, but's okay. 
we got to have answers too. Now, I'm not answering Dax. I'm just saying I got answers. You know, questions are okay. And so are answers. The reason we ask questions is because we want answers. And I'm not saying that I'm answering you or Dax. I mean, Dax has given words to what a lot of people are saying, of course. I mean, that's, that's what rap and art's all about. I mean, that's, that's the whole idea. But I got my answers. And I think that it would be a shame and a sham if I didn't tell people, these are awesome questions, good questions. I hope you ask these questions. I want you to know there are answers that I found. And if that can help you find answers, great. If you just need to be in that place in your life where right now you're asking and you don't want to hear even my answers, great, cool, fine, awesome. But I hope that we ask questions expecting answers. That's my only thing. I, I had friends... They'd ask these questions and they're still asking them and they don't want answers. And, and I look at their lives and what's going on and other things and I'm like, do you guys really even want answers? Are you guys really even asking? But Dax is really asking. And I think that the people that like his video are really asking. And so I'm just sharing what my answers were. And that's it. Also, Marshall, hey, my grandma was a 313 area code. I still remember her number. And, and uh, so, so Marshall, he, he was, okay, sorry about Marshall. I didn't know who Eminem even was. It was about 2000 or so. Slim Shady was out on the radio. I didn't heard it because I lived in this little bubble from, you know, I went to the Moody Bible Institute and, and I grew up in backwoods in Michigan. And so I was with my little brother. We were in Cabrini Green and I was wearing a white shirt, bleached hair. And two guys came out of the building and go, hey, it's a real Slim Shady. And I'm like, I, I looked at my little bro. He's 10 years old. I go, who is the real Slim Shady? And he says, oh man, that's Eminem. And I'm like, Emma who? And so he introduced me to the real Slim. And uh, I was already kind of a Slim Shady dressed like him and didn't even know it. So uh, so Slim, I, I uh, yeah. Okay, anyhow, that, that's how I found out about Eminem. And, you know, he was tutoring me with some stuff through the airwaves. He's, you know, Eminem's tutored us all. You know, so thanks, Marshall. Um, but I tell you, you know, as awesome as Eminem's been for inspiration, just for me, Eight Mile, I get that. You know, I, I, I didn't live in Detroit, but I remember I was actually doing AT and T stuff in Detroit, and it was awesome going through towns, talking with real people. Man, I, I love that place, and I love the people. And I remember driving down Eight Mile. I had to call my buddy for I'm like, I'm on Eight Mile, and he's like, Yeah, because you know, three one three. So. Um, as, as big an influence as Marshall was, Dax, you made me rap, man. You made me rap. Love you.